What's up, spectators? Welcome back to another episode of Professor Layton and the Azran Legacy. Here we are in the town of Cod looking for the Azran girl, and we've run into a fisherman. We must speak with the fisherman. Right, fisherman? Morning. Busy day for tourists. Your face is super weird, man. Does that mean you've seen other tourists? The big bully who just left. You saw him. And a girl. Ha! So she has been this way. Hmm, odd looking lass. Not ugly, but weird get up. She's with you? Yes, she is. And we absolutely have to find her before those uniformed thugs do. Hmm. What's the matter? Do you know anything? You don't look like you're in cahoots with the other one. Alright. The girl was here looking for something. She was making a beeline for somewhere or other when those bullies in uniform showed up. She looked terrified, so I told her to hide while I sent them off track. But she's gone now, see? See? Where could she have been going, do you think? Dunno. But there's a hill up that way. Good lookout point. Ah, good idea. We'll go up the hill and maybe we'll spot her from there, right? Sounds good to me. Alright, goodbye, Mr. Fisherman. Uh, rocks, shrubs, fishing boats, mountains, more rocks. Nothing even remotely girl shaped. I can't see her anywhere. Well, we've climbed all the way up here, so let's make sure we have a good look over the whole area. We may spot her yet. How do I do that? Hey, the view's amazing from up here. You can see the whole town and most of the lake. I bet the spot sees tons of picnickers. Professor, look over there! It's Targe and Zeppelin. So that's where they came down. It is rather unfortunate that they landed so close. But they're not moving, which means they haven't found the girl yet, right? Or their ship sustained damage during the crash, and they're still doing repairs. Either way, we have a chance. Oh! Did you hear that? Yes. Smooth jazz piano coming out of nowhere. It sounded rather like the fisherman we met just now. Oh no! Do you think the Tarjan thug came back? Let's hurry down! Shamona! Puzzle for me? Whoa, whoa, war! War never changes. Are you okay? What war? Not war, water. The girl, she was walking on water. I beg your pardon? I'm telling you, she walked straight across the surface, from the shore to the middle of the lake. That's impossible. Nobody could walk on water. Don't be so quick to dismiss this, Luke. One moment. Here now, look down at where I'm standing. What? How are you doing that, Professor? <laughs> Puzzle number 17. Upon examining the surface of the lake more closely, Leighton discovers some floating ice shelves thick enough to stand on. While the girl appeared to be walking on water, she was merely stepping across ice. Stepping on an ice shelf sets it in motion, and it keeps moving until it bumps into something or reaches the shore. Using the floating ice shelves and the small islands in the lake to your advantage help Leighton catch up to the girl. This I can do, probably. Let's see, I'm looking... The best way to do this, one second. Um... Right, left, up. Hmm... So that means at some point... We need to be... Wait, hold on a second. Does the ice move? Oh! 
Well, this changes everything if I can do that. All right, hold on. Ah, this. I don't under, okay. Let's shed some light on this one. I I, I really thought Excellent. it would take me a little longer if than I that. I do say so myself. Ice cold. You're damn right I'm ice cold, killer bee. Huh? <gasps> Is that what is that? Who would have thought there'd be something like this hidden under the lake? I can't see the girl. Where's she gone? Do you think she slipped off this walkway? Hold on. Over there. Is that a passage leading into the ruin? The girl must have gone inside. Come along. We don't want to lose her again. Grief. I never would have imagined this. I think these ruins are responding to the girl. So they too must be. Azran, yes, no doubt about it. So your theory was correct, Professor Sycamore. It would seem so. An ancient Azran structure with a powerful magnetic field that disrupts passing aircraft. Of course, that's just an unfortunate side effect. I should really like to know what the true purpose of this place is. Professor, I see her! people to be passed on <gasps> our legacy to the world we left behind if you wish to know our secrets and your motives are pure then all will be revealed this dome will show you the way find the locations of the Azran keys prove you are worthy of our power Slowest fall ever. I... What? Where am I? So you were not aware? You called yourself Aurora just now. Is that your name? Aurora? I, I don't know. Do you remember being trapped in the ice? Me? Trapped in... ice? You claim to be the emissary of the Azran. Is it possible that you were sent by the Azran people as their messenger? A messenger? No. I... I don't know. 
Perhaps your role as a messenger operates only on a subconscious level. The Azran have sent us their greatest puzzle yet in the shape of this girl. It is up to us to rise to the challenge. I suppose you're right. But what could it all mean? The Azran people use a cryogenic technique to hold a girl in stasis until the day that she would be awoken by a future civilization. As the messenger of the Azran, Aurora is able to interact with Azran ruins and is likely the key to unlocking their secrets. An incantation from the mysterious girl lifted the seal on the lake and revealed an Azran ruin hidden beneath the water. This ruin seemingly emits some kind of magnetic force that interferes with passing aircraft. As the girl, I mean, as Aurora said, the symbols on the walls of this dome are a guide. Yes, they must represent something. The Azran people yearn for the skies, to go ever higher and always further. The most prominent characters in their myths were the great riders of the sky. It is a fair bet that the symbols on these walls refer to them. Garsa, upon her raven-feathered steed, in her hand a black-bladed sword, sharpened on the edge of time and in her heart. The courage of an entire kingdom. Very good. You're familiar with Rutledge's ancient histories then. It's own, uh, it is the only mainstream work that discusses Azran myth. There's a story about the Riders of the Sky on the walls. Do you want me to read it for you? Please do. At the dawn of time, the world was one big continent, and the Celestial King sheltered all the lands beneath his ample wings. All living things served him. The King had five children, the great Riders of the Sky but they were proud and coveted their father's throne. The constant warring of the riders exhausted the people and tainted the land. Roused at last to anger, the king drew his sword and made four strokes, slicing the land into ten continents. His children, he banished them to live on earth. The king sealed the sacred gates to the skies and scattered the five keys on earth, that his children might one day find them. Ever since that day, the king's children have gazed up at the skies, longing to fly again one day. Now I see it. The patterns on, on the, the patterns on the walls must represent the earth. If we were to gather the five keys, we could unlock the gates to the skies, or in other words, the power of the Azran. Incredible. I should very much like to solve this puzzle. Number 18, The Celestial King The walls of the Azran Dome tell the story of the Celestial King and his children, the Riders of the Sky. Enraged by the Riders' constant warring, the King made the four strokes, yes, 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 decrypt the story by reenacting it, using four lines to divide the land into ten sections, separating the Riders. Draw lines between the points around the edge, but be careful, you can only use each point once, and no line may touch a Rider. All right, so where, okay, so the, one, two, three, four, five, five riders, separated into 10 sections. Ah, okay, hmm. So it's gonna be, an, it's gonna end up being something like this. Is that touching technically? I think it might be, put that back. Um, so that doesn't touch. This could be something. That doesn't touch either. Oh, I see. Ah. So this is going to be a bit of a trial and error thing, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Missing one. That's 12 sections. Okay. My intuition should serve me well. Huzzah! There it is! A satisfying puzzle indeed. Quite right, quite right.
Delightfully divided. The walls of the dome represent a map of the world, and you've just created five intersections with your lines. Ever heard the saying, X marks the spot? The five keys must lie at the points where the king sword strokes beat. It's a metaphor. The celestial king in the story represents the Az uh, Azran civilization. Which means the king's children, who were banished to Earth, are us, the distant heirs to their legacy. Professor, have you noticed the five oval symbols, like this one just here? Could they represent the five keys? I believe so. They look rather like the artifacts Rutledge descriptively referred to as eggs. Scholars have been pondering their function for years, but not one guess that they might in fact be keys. They are aura stones, vessels capable of channeling the power of the Azram. Aura stones, did you say? Did seeing this symbol trigger this recollection? Perhaps if we found these Azran relics, it would bring yet more back to you. You may in time fully regain your memory. We will certainly need your help decrypting this puzzle. That's why Targent want you too, no doubt. Most certainly. There's no sense in staying here any longer. We must leave this town before they find us. Ah, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, because it seems like we're about to go into a new chapter. So let me just read this first. The walls of the Azran Dome and Cod indicate the locations of five egg-shaped Azran artifacts. These eggs apparently form the key that unlocks the legacy of the Azran, but what on earth could this mean in practical terms? All right then, so stay tuned for the next episode! Which is gonna be the day after tomorrow, right? Because I have a lib- um, I have a- what is it? Because I'm on vacation, my videos are scarce this week and next week. So stay tuned for that, and bye-bye!